OBS has a ton of filters that you can apply to things like your camera, your gameplay, videos, pretty much anything you can think of. For example, you can right click in your camera, go into filters and then add a color correction filter to adjust the colors of your camera or even make your camera see through by adjusting the opacity. Or if you're more experienced, you probably played around with things like stream effects that allow you to do things like adding a 3D transform to add some tilt and rotation to your camera or adding things like a blur filter to censor out your face like those Japanese films? By the way, if any of this stuff is blowing your mind, I have a whole channel where we talk about effects like this, so go and check out all my other videos. Have a field day, you're welcome. Now, all of these filters are really cool, but what if instead of just toggling on and off these filters, you wanted to smoothly animate them? For instance, here's a channel point reward that spins my camera around. Or how about this effect that takes my camera from being clear and then slowly transitions it to being blurred out. Or my favorite, doing these smooth tilts and rotations in 3D. Before doing anything, let's talk a little bit about how this is gonna work. I'm essentially gonna be showing you how to keyframe within OBS. Now I know what you're thinking, Stanley. Nutty. What is keyframing? What is that? Basically, keyframing is a term used by animation nerds to describe how a thing animates. Now, that might still be a bit confusing, so let's just say, for instance, we have here Harambe, and we want to animate Harambe to move across the screen. So we would basically say at zero seconds, we're going to put Harambe on the left of the screen, and then two seconds later, we're gonna put Harambe on the right of the screen. What you've just described is two different keyframes for the position of Harambe. But it's not just the position that we can keyframe, you can keyframe basically anything. So we can say at the start of the animation, we'll make Harambe small, and then at the end of the animation, we'll make Harambe big. Or maybe at the start of the animation, Harambe will be alive, and then at the end, you know, let's not go there. Anyway, this is the basic concept we're gonna be using to animate any filter within OBS. So let's just give a more concrete example now. Let's just say we're using the stream effects blur filter on our camera. And if you've ever used that filter before, you know that it'll have a slider so you can set the intensity of the blur effect. Well, we can basically keyframe that size slider so that when we hit a hotkey, it's gonna start at a value of one and then over the span of like five seconds, it's gonna smoothly animate to 50%. That's basically what keyframing is. So if you can understand that concept, that's gonna make the rest of this video super easy to follow. All right, so now you're an expert on keyframing. How do we actually implement this in OBS? All of this is now possible using a plugin for OBS Studio called Move Transition. Now you're probably already familiar with Move Transition because we talked all about it in this video here. So if you haven't seen that video, go click on it. In fact, if you have seen it, click on it anyway because that would be pretty dope for me. Just to get you up to speed, Move Transition allows you to do these really cool, smooth animated scene transitions in OBS but it's actually capable of way more than that. And you're gonna see that in this video. So to get you started, make sure you have the Move Transition plugin installed for OBS Studio. As always, this isn't gonna work with Streamlabs OBS, okay? I know, Stanley, please stop crying, okay? Just, just move all your stuff to OBS Studio already. You'll be all right. You're also gonna to wanna to install the StreamFX plugin. It's not 100% necessary to do keyframing, but a lot of the examples we're gonna be doing in this video are gonna be using StreamFX. Plus it's just a really good plugin. So make sure you have that installed too. You'll also need something like Touch Portal or Leoran Board to trigger these animations. You can also use a Stream Deck as well, but just know that we're gonna be toggling filters on and off. And because a Stream Deck doesn't support filters in OBS, you're gonna to have to install something called OBS Tools that we talked about in the last video. And even that's not perfect, so you can use a Stream Deck, I just wouldn't totally recommend it for what we're gonna be doing today. Cool, so we're gonna get started with a really simple example. So I'm gonna get you to right click in your camera, go into filters and then add a blur filter. Now this blur filter, you're only gonna see it if you have the Stream Effects plugin installed, which is why I asked you to install it. In the dropdown box, select Gaussian because it just looks better. Also, I don't know how to pronounce Gaussian, is it Gaussian? 
Anyway, you guys tell me how to pronounce it. Underneath, you'll see a size slider and you'll see that dragging the slider to a bigger number will have a more intense blur effect. So we're gonna simulate the effect of dragging this slider from the lowest value of one and then dragging it to 50%. For now, leave the slider at 50, then add a new filter called move value. The move value filter is what we're gonna be using to keyframe our blur filter. In the move value filter, you'll see a lot of options. Most importantly, the first dropdown box, if you click in it, you'll see a list of all of the other filters that you have applied to this source. So at the top, you'll see the blur filter, which you just added. But if you had more filters here, like a 3D transform filter or a color correction filter, you'll also see those options listed here. So select blur, and then in the next dropdown box, you're gonna see all of the settings for the blur filter. If you're trying to animate a different filter, you would see different settings here, but because we're trying to animate the blur filter and we're trying to animate that size slider, we're gonna select size. The value field is automatically gonna be set to 50 because if you go back to our blur filter, that's what we set our size slider to. We're gonna leave this at 50 for now. You'll see what this does in a second. For the start and the end delay, don't worry about that. Just leave it at zero. But for the duration, we're gonna set this to 3000 milliseconds because we're gonna set our animation to last for three seconds. Everything else you can leave at default but now we're gonna go back to our blur filter and we're gonna change our blur size to one, which is the lowest. Then if you go back to the move value filter and scroll all the way to the bottom and click on the start button, our camera is going to animate from clear to 50% blurred. So that's really nice. If you go back to your blur filter, you'll see that the size is now at 50 because it's animated from one to 50. Now that's great, but then what if we wanted to reset the blur? So now we wanna go backwards. We wanna go from 50 back to one. Well, you just create another move value filter with all of the exact same settings, but in the value field, just put the value of one. So now when you click the start button on that filter, it's gonna go backwards, it's gonna start from being blurry and then go back to being clear. All right, awesome, this is exactly what we want, but you don't wanna keep going into this filter menu and then clicking that start button. So how do we get the animation to trigger? The simplest way of doing this is to go into the trigger dropdown on both of the move value filters and then set the trigger to enable and disable. What this will do is anytime you enable the filter, it's going to do whatever that animation is. And then after the animation is done, it's gonna turn it off. So if you toggle the first move value filter on, it's gonna make our camera blurry. And then when you toggle the second move value filter, it's gonna make our camera clear. So now that we have these filters that are gonna trigger our animations, now we can just bring in touch portal and create two separate buttons. The first one is gonna enable that first filter and then the second one is gonna enable that second filter. And just to demonstrate how that works, now I have a button on my phone. If I press it, it animates our camera to make it blurry like this. And then when we press the other button, it makes our camera clear. So there you go, congratulations. Your first animation done in OBS. All right, another example. Let's see how this works with a 3D transform. So let's just clear out all the filters we have already and we're just gonna add a 3D transform filter. You're gonna change the camera to perspective and then adjust the field of view to 110 degrees. And then we're also gonna tilt our camera. So we're gonna adjust the yaw to negative eight degrees. You can see this is gonna be a little bit more complex now because we have to animate that perspective slider as well as that yaw value. Why am I wearing a basketball jersey all of a sudden? Just kidding. Apparently I lost footage just then, but basically just do exactly the same thing as the last example, just add a move value filter. But this time in the dropdown box, select 3D transform. We're gonna work on keyframing the perspective value first. So in the settings, choose perspective. Then for everything else, just copy all of our settings from the first example, duration, 3000 milliseconds, trigger, enable and disable. Cool, uh, back to the rest of the video. Did, did that work? Did that transition? Motherfucker. Then add another move value filter, select 3D transform again, but then for the setting, this time select yaw. Everything else keep exactly the same. So duration set to three seconds and then trigger set to enable and disable. Then just like the previous example, you're gonna need another move value filter to reset each of our settings. So 
another move value filter to reset our perspective to 90 degrees, and then another move value filter to reset our yaw value back to zero degrees. In total, there should be four move value filters now, but in theory, if you wanted to adjust another setting like the roll value, you just add two more move value filters so you'd have six move value filters. In fact, that's exactly what I did for my big head channel point reward. I just adjusted the field of view, the Y position, and the pitch of my camera, and then it makes my head look like it's basically like a turn into like Megamind. After that, it's just a matter of going into Touch Portal, creating a new button, and then the first button is going to enable that first pair of move value filters. And then the second one, which is gonna reset our camera, is going to enable that second pair of move value filters. Again, you can expand this to as many filters and as many settings as you want. It's up to you how complex you wanna make it. And finally, as a bonus, I wasn't gonna explain this, but just because everybody keeps asking me, I'm gonna show you guys how I do my famous barrel roll effect. X-Split gets do to be cool. Roll. Nah, X-Split is like the underground. I started off by adding a 3D transform filter and changing the camera to perspective. And then I adjusted the roll value and set it to negative 180 degrees. So my camera is upside down. Then I added a move value filter. And then in the settings dropdown box, I select roll. And then I set the value to positive 180 degrees. I also set the easing function to ease out. I'm not gonna explain what this does, but you can just play around with it and you can see how it affects your animation. And now if I trigger this animation, you're gonna see that it's gonna flip my camera around. The only problem is the start of the animation, my camera is upside down and you don't want it to do that. So I added another 3D transform filter to rotate my camera 180 degrees again so that it starts right side up. The only tricky thing is you'll notice that if you try to run the animation again, it's not gonna rotate our camera because our camera is already at 180 degrees on the roll property. So we need it to snap back to negative 180 degrees instantly after we've run an animation. So th this is a bit tricky, but basically you just add another move value transition, set the setting to roll again, and then set it to negative 180 degrees. But this time for the duration, set that to as low as you can go, which is 10 milliseconds. Now, when you go back to the first move value filter, you can go all the way to the bottom and you'll see this dropdown box that says next move. If you select that dropdown box, you can actually select that second filter. And so basically what this does is it's gonna run that first animation. Then after that's done, it's gonna quickly run that second animation, which will reset the roll property back to negative 180. So that one's a little bit more advanced. I just wanted to throw that in there because I know everybody's gonna be asking me how I do the barrel roll effect. So I think I'll end the video right there, but that should give you a taste of how advanced animations work within OBS. Of course, if you wanted to take this a step further, you can do some seriously complex and advanced stuff. I'm just not gonna go through in this video because I don't wanna fry your brain any more than it probably already is. But if you wanna get even more examples of the advanced things that you can do within OBS, make sure to jump into my Twitch streams. I stream four nights a week, and we're always experimenting with new effects in OBS. And sometimes we have guests on, like my twin stepsister, Natina. Feel free to join the Discord. We've got a huge community of some super smart people who can help you out with all your streaming questions. Other than that, I'll see you guys, I'd like to say next week, because I said I do weekly videos, but let's be real. I'm probably not going to do another video for like five weeks, but I'll see you when I see you, all right? Peace out. See you next time. All right. Take care.